To see if the iPad should still be crowned King Tablet, I've enlisted the help of tech-mad comedian Darren Harriot. He's on the search for a tablet to keep him tickled on tour, and he's invited me to Dudley in the Black Country. It's where he's from, and it boasts a rich cultural heritage that'll help put our tablets to the test. I'm from here, and I'm a comedian, and I'm not Lenny Henry. The tablets me and Darren, not Lenny Henry, will be trying out are the latest version of Apple's entry-level iPad. This market leader was launched in September and is the most expensive of our three today. Coming in a bit cheaper is the Samsung Galaxy Tab A7. And our cheapest offering is from Huawei, their MatePad. First, we'll be testing ease of use. I've devised a series of questions that Darren must answer using the tablets as his only research tool. Whichever tablet offers up the answer in the quickest time is the winner. And first up, it's the iPad. The first question which concerns this chap here. Now, as a young man, at what else did legendary footballer Duncan Edwards represent his school? Get finding it out. OK. The iPad is by a small margin the heaviest on test at 487 grams, and it's 7.5 millimetres thick. It's really light, really light, really thick. Fi it's thinner than my phone. It's also the only one today with a 4 by 3 aspect ratio screen. It's a true tone display which can adapt its colour temperature to its surroundings. And Darren's taking full advantage of it. Got it! What? Morris dancing! Amazing and true! Yes! yes. Well Get done! Him. Darren found the answer using the iPad in just 23 seconds. How will he fare with the Samsung? Question number two is all about the region's distinctive dialect. What does a bibble in a can or a pea in a colander mean? OK. Mm. This is like translation, yeah. The Samsung's slightly lighter and thinner than the iPad and uses the same TFT LCD screen technology, but it has a narrower 5 by 3 aspect ratio. I do like the keyboard, although I do find the keys quite small. Ah, um, is that because of the narrow aspect yeah, ratio? Yeah, the narrow aspect. I've got quite big hands, eh, I? So... Oh, here we go! Somebody who rattles and never stops talking. You've got it! There we go! Excellent. <laughs> so that's 52 seconds for the Samsung. Time for Darren to try the Huawei. And a rather morbid question about the black country of old. What was the average age of death in the black country in 1841? Okay. It's all right, we're just talking about the average age of death in 1841. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, thank you. <laughs> this feels like it might be the lightest one I've had. And you'd be right, Darren. The Huawei's the lightest on test, and it's 7.35 millimetres thick. It comes with an IPS LCD display that should allow for wider viewing angles. Like the Samsung, it has that narrower 5 by 3 aspect ratio. Again, quite narrow as well, this one. Yes. It reminds me of the Samsung. Oh, here we go. Hold on. I've got Hold an answer. On. Let's make everybody happy at home. Yes. Uh, the Black Country had one of the low... I don't want to say that. The Black Country had one of the lowest uh, life expectancies in history. 16 years and seven months. It is a staggering fact. That's really, that's really quite sad. With Darren's question answered in 51 seconds on the MatePad, it's the iPad which gets the first point of the day in our ease of use test. Time for test two, cameras and screen resolution. And for that, I'm taking Darren to nearby Tipton, to a world-famous pie factory come pub. Now, are you familiar with Manny Rourke's pie shop? It's the world famous. I thought what we should do was take photos and video of the pies, and it'd be an excellent opportunity to uh, review the tablet's yeah. cameras. And then we get some of the pie. Yes! Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's, go. Uh, let's go. Let's go, let's oh, go. I'm so excited. To put our tablets' cameras through their paces, we're heading into the beating heart of the pie factory, the kitchen. Fine documentary we're making here. Each tablet can capture video at 1080p and 30 frames per second. How well can they record the process of pie preparation? You've got really nice eyes as well. But I wanted to say that to you anyway. I can tell they're, I can tell they're hazel in the iPad. And when it comes to photos, the decor provides perfect subjects for a variety of colourful and detailed snaps. Oh, what an excellent range of expressions. Almost looks black and white. After a busy lunchtime rush, it's time for Darren and I to tuck into pies of our own while we review our work on each of the tablet screens. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt this, but should we have a look at some of the videos? Yes, have a look at the videos. The iPad has a 10.2-inch screen and the highest resolution on test. But what will the 8-megapixel photos and auto-focused video we've just taken look like? I think that looks really good. 
Mm. What do you think? The quality? Yeah, it looks the same colour as the pie. And the photos, are, uh, again, looks pretty acceptable, I think, because it's not the brightest lighting situation there, and yet they're reasonably sharp. It's a strong start from the iPad, then. How will the Samsung compare? It may have a lower screen resolution, but it claims a slightly wider colour gamut than the iPads. It just looks dark and gloomy to me. It's not as bright as it was in there. We're bright people. We look bright. We look dark on this. We look sad. So look at a few pictures of me. It's not in, is that not in focus, is it? It's struggling with the focus, isn't it? Yeah. So the Samsung's autofocus has left something to be desired, and the 10.4-inch screen hasn't impressed. Would the Huawei with the same size screen and the same resolution do any better? Colours are definitely better. Certainly see the colours more realistic than the Samsung, probably not as realistic as the iPad. Let's look at stills. It's not it's not bad. Well, is that better than the best of best of yeah. iPad pictures? Still. It looks more realistic on the iPad. It's like watching a like a murder mystery, and it's who you suspected at the beginning. For Darren, it was the iPad what done it, and it's a clear winner in test number two. But there's still time for the Samsung and Huawei to redeem themselves in our third and final test, audio. With most entry-level tablets geared up to be entertainment devices, it's helpful if they can deliver impressive sound. So I'm taking Darren to the Black Country's answer to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which doubles as a popular music venue. Now, in order to test the audio abilities of these tablets, local artist Jess here is going to perform a song which we're going to record on them and play back. Mm. Darren Thank and I will be diving into some well-earned refreshment yes. while soundman Ben professionally records Jess's song, which was written by a composer from these parts. It's a long way to Great, but which of our tablets will play back Ben's recording the best? First up, once again, it's the iPad, which comes with stereo speakers. It doesn't sound very loud. It doesn't. I mean, well, the first thought this is quite low volume, isn't it? Yeah, it's not really doing it for me. I mean, um, you're, you're amazing, of course. Oh, yes. You, you definitely <laughs> are doing it for me, but the sound is not... It's not doing you justice. While the iPad does have stereo speakers, they're very quiet and both positioned at the same end, which reduces their effectiveness. Would the Dolby Atmos-enabled Samsung do any better? Well, that's much more usable volume. Was that yeah, turned right up? That was loudest, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's got four speakers in there, two each side, and they are actually each side. Greater volume and better balance means the Samsung takes the firm lead in our audio test. But could the Huawei MatePad also with four speakers impress? Streets were paved with gold, sure everyone was gay, singing songs of Piccadilly, and Leicester Square. I don't think it was as good as the Samsung. Same here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Samsung just seemed to have a bit more space in the sound, a bit more... Yeah. A bit, a bit more almost frequency range, whereas this feels slightly more sort of compressed. Cheers. Cheers. It's a lovely day it's been. It really has. Mm. And with that conclusive result, the Samsung picks up its first point of the day. But with two wins in the bag, can Apple still claim to have the best entry-level tablet? Well, can it? Uh, yes, it can. Though, obviously, if you're planning to do uh, quite a bit of listening, I would use headphones. Happily, the entry-level model still has a headphone socket or invest in some external speakers. OK, thank you, John.